hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for choosing to watch my videos if you're new here my name is betty and welcome to az family today guys we have guests not just a guest not one but two and uh they have amazing amazing information to share with us and tell us more about um different visas and tell us how god opened their ways from one visa to the other visa to oh my god let me tell you when you trust in god he does miracles he opened ways he opened doors and you know uh this couple they have amazing videos guys so when you watch them when you listen to their story uh if you have questions if you want to know more about them go to their youtube channel now we're gonna bring them and they will introduce themselves tell us who they are and uh, what God has done for them. So, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for having Say us. Say hi to our viewers. Hey, we appreciate this moment that God has given us so that we share a lot about our story, our journey, how we got our visas, and where we are currently. And uh, we hope you're going to get inspired, you're going to be blessed, and something maybe teach you how we can we can go about finding visa okay so your names please and where do you come from so my name is uh la voicia akolo and uh, we come from kenya the western part of kenya and uh, we live in uh, virginia currently and my name is Frida Akolo, Akolo Akolo, the family name. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> yeah, we come from Kenya, west, the western part of uh, of Kenya, next, next to Lake Victoria, almost. <laughs> okay. Yes. Wow, all the way from Lake Victoria to I Virginia. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of big fishes there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always, you know what? I always desire to go. When I go to Kenya, I have to visit Kisumu. I've been there yeah. once, but just passing by. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I, I wanna, I wanna go and eat the fish there. I hope they, you guys they too. will have a good tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah. So yeah, welcome to Betty Az uh, channel. Is that the name? The name you have down there is that, that how you call yourself on your YouTube channel? Uh, actually, we are. So, so the name we have there down there is Frida La Voice. So we have shortened the name on our channel to the first three letters of each name. Oh, okay, free, free and love. And love, yes, because those are long names. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy to have you here today. So, um, you know, I listened to your uh, to your story and you got you guys shared and you talked about how you came uh, to the US. Kindly tell our viewers uh, who who joined who, who, who started this, you know? <laughs> so uh, apparently we came together, but I'm the one who uh, applied okay to, to come as a student so okay. I, was, I was given a student visa f1 visa and then she came as a dependent so we came at the same time me as a student and her as a dependent doing some research so i got this uh, research a research bag <laughs> so i was uh motivated to, to do more research so i applied for, to a university texas adam university Okay. And they, because my research was interesting, they liked my research and offered me a full scholarship to study the PhD. Wow. That's, that, that's how it came, yeah. Yeah, smart guy. You had a uh, good, you know, when you eat fish, you, you become <laughs> smart like that. <laughs> actually, actually, I, I was doing research, even, even in Kenya, and, I, and, and published some papers. So that's what made them like my CV. and. Get me the scholarship. Oh, so it's not like you were working on coming to the US. It's like an opportunity just brought itself. Yeah, I was working on my research, and then I happened to have some uh, contacts uh, who knew that there, there is a we have chances in the US where you can go to university and do more research. Okay. So I get applied, and I was given a scholarship because they liked my research. 
Okay. Yeah. Wow, that is good. Uh, so, I mean, like, uh, did that take a long time to get the, the visa and everything? And how, how long was the visa? So, uh, when the, you apply to the uh, university, it takes quite some time because you have to do an exam, which they call GRE exam, which qualifies you to go into a graduate program. Okay. So once you, you pass the, uh, that exam, then you apply for the visa. It doesn't take long. It took like six months. About six months to get the visa. Yeah. Okay. And the, is it is that where the dependent visa comes in? Do you apply together or how did you guys go about it? So once you get the scholarship, they ask you whether you have dependents. If you say yes, they send you uh, an invitation dependents so they get what's called what is called an i-24 the i-24 is a form that the university gives you that it divides you and your dependents that states how much money or how much uh, support the university will give you so the, on, based on that financial statement from the university which is on the i-20 that is when you go to the embassy and request for the visa. Oh, okay. So, yeah. uh, your wife Frida, were you? What were you doing? Why were you in Kenya? Like before? Joining? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> I was a high school teacher. I was teaching math and biology. And uh, actually, it was a prayer that my husband used to work in Nairobi, and I, I used to work in rural uh, west part of uh, of Kenya. And I was praying that God may put us in one room because transfer was really hard. It was just a silent prayer. God, just open way that we may stay in one room because my husband used to travel every single night, every weekend from Nairobi to West Africa, to West, to West Africa, sorry. And yeah, yeah, and it was really hard. So God answered through that visa. And yes, I changed from being a teacher and, uh, to another profession, yeah. Actually, she resigned from her teaching position <laughs> and then followed me to the US. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, that, that's good. You know, you support your you support your man. And also you prayed for God to put you. You know, it's it's so hard for people when they're what your husband is. Can you imagine it was hard enough when he was in Nairobi and you're in I know. And now imagine him being in the US. And I feel for a lot of families that are separated like that. So God is faithful. He, Amen. he heard prayers and yeah. So uh were you excited when you heard your husband got the scholarship? I was as the fact I was I was I was the one that pushed him like you know he just told me he got scholarship so I was the determined and whether to say yes we are going or not. And I said why well, let's go let's go you got a chance got to just open this door for us let's use it and so what's required is that the university if you are doing a budget program in sciences, they're going to pay you a stipend. Okay. So that is what determines uh, the financial ability. And okay. Then you also need to have, so if that stipend won't be enough to support you, then you also need to have some money of your own. So when you go to the oh. embassy for the visa, they ask you for that university scholarship letter. Then they ask you also for if you have any bank statements so they can see. So if you have enough money, a scholarship plus your financial statement, they give you the visa to travel. So if you get a scholarship and you still don't have enough money, then it's going to be a, a problem, even yeah. if you have the scholarship. Okay. Yeah, sure. You have scholarship plus. So if you are going with dependents, then you okay. have some extra money. Okay. So uh, when when you when somebody gets a like a, you know the student visa, do the do do you automatically get a chance to bring your your dependents or is it does it apply to all student visas or? Yeah, it applies to all F one visas. Once you get your F one visa, you can request the university. And once you just request the university, they give you the F two visa automatically. Okay. Your dependents, yes. 
Yeah, I ask that because I hear some people tell me like uh, they got the student visa, they don't know about, maybe, you know, some people, not everybody that knows about, you know, about uh, you can bring your family. So p some people, they worry about that. They don't want to come here as a student and they only think, oh, maybe we try green card. That's the only way we can move, relocate there, all of actually, us. Actually, from, from the way they go, you have to tell them that you have dependents. Yeah. They, they, they're going to issue you. They are, they are F2 visas at the same time as you are F1 visa. Oh, okay. So, wow, that's good. So you came over here and uh, take us through the, the whole journey, the whole experience. Uh, you got to the US, the culture shock. I mean, <laughs> take us through the journey. <laughs> oh my God, coming to US was a little different like you know how we used to Kenya there is people all over going to the shopping center walking and see people all over when we came here it was a desert there are no people oh my god this cars and we don't see people it's like oh my god Christmas crazy place it was a culture shock <laughs> the first time but for me during the first year I was here you know I was on F2 visa yeah. a dependent visa so what I did is just to do body workouts, exercise, and probably just do a few things in the house here and then. And after one year, my visa now changed to F1. I, I became a student. Okay. Yes. And for you to change from F1 to F2 to F1, you also you have to show some financial, like bank statement, uh, that's proving that you are able to support yourself and also pay for the school fees. You know, school fees in the US is very expensive. Okay. So it was really challenging for us. And uh, thank God we had some people around, you know, we just wanted a bank statement. When you have a bank statement showing you have such and such amount they require from you, you send to their uh, school and the school will send to the uh, to the immigration service and then they will convert the visa from F1, from F2, for my sake, to F1. And then I said, they were going to school. Okay, so uh, I know when people, when, when if, you're, if you came here with a work permit, like your husband comes with a work permit, you're dependent, obviously, like your wife uh, is allowed to work. So when you come with the F1, uh, uh, as uh, you know, your your husband ca came here with the F1, so you with the F2, you're not allowed to work? No, 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 no. You're not supposed to work. Like you are dependent. Dependent means you stay in the house and wait for food to come. <laughs> Wow. But you see the challenges uh, as a student, how many hours are you allowed to work? 20, right? You don't work for like, 20 hours. So as a student, F1 student, you're allowed to work in the university only for 20 hours, the same time as you are studying. Also, you have to maintain your grades. The GPA must be up to a level, otherwise they will stop giving you the, the scholarship. That's okay. So that's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I had to work as a graduate research and teaching assistant. At the same time, I had to do my classwork and keep my GPA also. Wow. Yeah. So that, 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 that's expensive to maintain a family depending on the few hours. So that means you guys exhausted your savings from home too, huh? Yeah, actually the salary I was giving was so little. <laughs> and I my wife was... And my wife also had a, a small baby, a three, Those two years, a three year old baby. <laughs> so you are barely just scrapping. <laughs> but, but interestingly, God just gave us the grace. And you are able to go through the first year and the second year before she changed to F1. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was the what are the requirements to change from F2 to F1, Frida? Actually, it's just uh, to show that uh, you have, first of all, you have. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. First of all, you have to show that you, you have been invited or you have been accepted to a college. And then they're going to ask you to present financial statement, the documents or a bank statement that show that you are able to support yourself, pay school fees, because my, I didn't receive any scholarship. So, like international school fees, you have to pay, you know, it's very high. 
So uh, you have to show bank statement that you are able to pay school fees and support yourself. After yeah. that, they go on and process your visa, change from F1 and F2 to F1, and you have to pay. I don't know how much you are paying for that visa, maybe around 700, something of the sort, to convert from uh, uh, F2 to uh, F1, you know, on $700. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's uh, so you didn't have to travel back home and change the visa. No, oh, we didn't. We did not. No, no traveling, just change. So, I, I, I hear people ask me if you can change uh the visas but you know from your story i'm learning i'm learning a lot honestly uh you know we learn every day i'm here on youtube yeah. talking but i'm learning a, a lot from you guys that you, you're able to change yeah yeah you don't have to go home to go against the person no you just change from here and that's you change for another visa yeah so you went for teaching or Okay, this is what happened. So uh, I was a, a teacher, yes, as I told you. When I came here, I just had a desire. I had two desires in my life when I was in uh, in, in high school, either to be a high school uh, uh, a teacher teaching science or to become a nurse. So the first dream was fulfilled in Kenya. So the second dream looked like uh, I acquired here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so I went to uh, as a, to study as a nurse in, uh, in in one of the community college, and then from there I progressed up. Oh, so you started from scratch because obviously yes, nursing I and did, teaching from is a zero. Different... Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, um, you know, I'm thinking about like here is your husband working few hours trying to provide here are you joining now school I know, of you, are students. <laughs> you have a baby <laughs> you know, you know that god really really was on our side because like in texas if you are a spouse to you have husband is working you know the college around there like they give you instant tuition so that reduced her, her by almost a half she by almost a half that's one way God blessed us. Oh. Then another way, uh, uh, I did get scholarships from my community college. Yeah, they also have scholarships for people who do well. Yeah. So she, she applied for them as good scholarships. Yeah. So that's how we paid we paid the school fees for. Yeah. At Nasik School. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you know, yeah, I couldn't work. I was not working. I wasn't working anywhere. Even with my F two, my F one visa, I could not work because I had we had a little baby. So my focus was just to go to school. And God is faithful. He opened door for scholarship, and that door, when God opened it, it never closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. How was that experience? Uh, you know, as a, it's good to talk to um, um, married people and they can tell you a lot of, uh, you know, th these stories. Because sometimes when people are going through these challenges, um, it becomes difficult and they ha start having issues even mm -hmm. in between themselves. You are like blaming this one, you know, <laughs> you know the baby is in the way. How was it for you as a family? How was that experience going through all that? I would say prayers are very powerful. Oh my God, prayers are very powerful. We just did it. Just it was like normal life. He was student. I was students. Like we just it was flowing that they way. It was just flowing, and uh, it was the grace of God that we were able to go through it, and we managed to finish it. <laughs> yeah, we have challenges like uh, like the kids had to had to go somewhere because the. So we met some very amazing people who could like just offer to take care of and her sister who just offered to I know she's from Kenya. She's she, from Kenya. She just okay. offered to take care of the baby. Otherwise it is cool. Yeah. Free of free of charge. She's free of charge. Wow. I know. <laughs> free of yeah. charge. We'll drop the child to her place and then uh, my classes will end around two o'clock. So I go pick up, or she will drop my the child at my place. Zero dollar. <laughs> wow. I know. And a Kenya. Wow. Yeah. They, are true. they are good people out there. I mean, they are. They are good people. I know. They are good people. So how many how many years did it, the, the nursing take you, the program? Okay. The program actually took me three years. 
because we have uh, the first year you are trying to get what we call the pre prerequisite, the course that will prepare you to go into a nursing school. So it took me two and a, two years to be most to get through the my 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 my, my degree to get my degree master's degree three years three years yes. And then uh, your husband it took him a year. PhD is really long. PhD in the science, in the biological science, is a nightmare. Because you have to do a, what's called a project, which must come up with something that you must make a discovery. You must make a new discovery. So you go to the lab and work hours and hours. So it took me seven years to, to do my PhD. Oh wow! You know, I thought because you are already like uh, you, 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 you had masters when you were back home, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so you can you, maybe you, just take us through that because I don't know. Uh, you take so us through the process. Yeah. So, if you are doing a science, a PhD in a biological science, you have to do uh, classwork, that's academic coursework. You also have to do lab lab project. That means you must. Uh, do some experiments which must generate data to help you publish a dissertation or a thesis. So that's where the trouble comes, getting that data. So you go to the lab, do experiments, some work, some don't work. Mm -hmm. So that will determine how long you'll stay in your program. So you wow. take years doing experiments, they work, some don't work, until the professors are satisfied that you have enough data that's when they allow you to graduate. So, you know, biology is very, is very funny because you can make a drug, you put the animal, and you get no results. And, and, and you don't know why that, that's happening. So you must discover why that's happening. That, that makes it very challenging. That's yeah. why doing a PhD in, a, in, a, in a biological science can take you a long time. Mm -hmm. It could be like seven years to, to graduate. Wow, I thought you were done in a, in a year. <laughs> so it was a whole new journey again. Uh, it was not easy. <laughs> wow, but right now, are you are you done completely? Yeah, I, 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 so in Texas, it was many years ago, it was 2015 okay. when, when I graduated from a PhD. So then I had to get a job to a, what is called a postdoctoral fellow. So we moved to New Jersey. That's where I did my postdoctoral job. By that time, we were still on the F1 visa. Yeah, F1 visa. Mm -hmm. So after your PhD, they you, you can extend your your F1 visa by two years in what they call optional practical training. Because once you are you are journey, you are you graduate, your visa expires. And you're supposed to leave the country. But okay, I applied, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. but I applied for extension. I got a job in New Jersey. That's where I went with my family. I stayed there for five years, doing a, a post doctoral fellow. And then after that, we moved to Virginia. That's where we are now. So right now, I'm working as a scientist in Virginia. Okay. Wow, guys, we have a scientist here. We have a nurse, <laughs> this house. <laughs> so uh, what advice would you give to uh, maybe somebody who is uh, doing, uh, like they, they, they want to become a student in the U.S.? Uh, is it better to apply after high school or, you know, undergraduate or wait until they have their master's? Or what is the, like, advice would you give, like, so you can come as an undergrad student and do your bachelor's, but then the problem is that they rarely give scholarships for bachelor's unless you are like an exceptional student. Okay. But the, if you're in Kenya and you've you got a bachelor's, you can come and do master's or PhD, which is easier because okay. they, they prefer uh, graduate students. They prefer people who have master's or, or who have bachelor's because they can employ you as a, a graduate research assistant, and that will pay your scholarship and also pay for your upkeep. So I advise somebody, if they want to come to the US, it's easier to come and do your master's or PhD. 
Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, they can do their degrees back home and finish all that and then come. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. also, is it cheaper? I, I think so, right? Yeah, and also, if you come to do a PhD uh, in a science-based course, nobody will give you full scholarship. Okay. Because, because they also use you, you to work as a research assistant. So they pay for your, your scholarship full plus stipend. Um, so when you come here with, uh, like with your children, like, uh, now, you know, the way maybe, I don't know if you guys had other kids before that, but uh, the kids, are they able to go to school and up to what level, uh, with your visas before you change to that? I think school is free. So if the kids come here, they just go to school. Yeah. So the kids are also given the F2 visas yeah. and they are free to go to school mm -hmm. up to... 12th grade, yeah. free of charge because they pay for your your school fees. What about because college? Because I had uh, somebody say like, uh, if this kid come here, it, like under the parents who are students or their their students, they have a problem going to like college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have kids who are college age, then the story is different mm -hmm. because yeah. they have to get their own F1 visas and go to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. so if you have to come with a, a, a child with in high school, they go straight to high school, and it's easy. But kids who are older, they have to go to college, they have to get their old visas and pay for their college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys take us through the journey. How did you transition? Because I saw your video, it became American citizens <laughs> from <laughs> F1, F2, now here we are with the American citizens. Yeah, my wife came on F2, then she went to F1, you have to green card and she became a citizen. Yeah. So so after our F1 visa expired, we had to apply to get for a green card. Yeah, and then that, that's a process where we used a route which is called the EB2 route, where you do a, what's called a self petition. That means that applies to people who have got advanced degrees, like a master's. And the PhDs. So in, in that, that case, you you write a petition for the US government and tell them that your stay in the US is beneficial to the government. So you list down points that makes you think that your stay here is better for the government. So you can say things like, I am an accomplished researcher in my field, I have published scientific papers in journals, I do the research that benefits the U.S. economy. So once they look at that petition, they think that you are able, they grant you a green card, an EB2 green card. Yeah, okay. that's the route that we used. Wow. In that case, that case they, you don't need to have an employer. You just make your own case. Oh, you don't have to have like uh, the job apply for you? No. Yeah. Oh, and then, okay. then your, your spouse and your kids, they get the automatic green card once you get yours. Not okay. a green card. After, after five years of, of green card, then you can now apply for to be a citizen. Where you don't go for interview, they ask you some questions, civic questions, geographic mm -hmm. questions, they look at your criminal backgrounds. Then if they are satisfied that you are you are you have been a good citizen, you have been paying taxes, mm -hmm. you're, you're not a criminal, they give you right away and we are a citizenship. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, did it cost you money? Is it expensive? It's very expensive actually. Was it 1500? It's like with 1500 uh, US dollars to get that. Yeah, you pay money. It's expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> You have to be ready for everything we do in migration, changing from one state to another, you have to pay a lot of money. It's yeah. expensive, yeah. So even changing from F2 to F1 costed you money? Yes, it did. I think from F2 to F1, it costed me around 700 US dollars. dollars that time. I don't know what it is right now. Maybe maybe right now could be more than that. And then from F1 to green card. Another, oh my God. It was 7,000. It was 7,000. Because you are three <laughs> yeah, it, it was expensive. Yeah, we were three, so that really cost a lot of money. 
Mm -hmm. And then so the uh, whole process, you see the whole process for green card, everything it costs close to ten thousand. Yeah. US dollars, yeah. And also to become a citizen, you have to pay some money too. Yes, you pay some money. Become yeah, seven hundred per per yeah. Yeah, it's a very expensive. It's very expensive, but if you are determined, you can do it. <laughs> you can, of of course, it's possible. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. So, what advice do you have for somebody looking for scholarship? Somebody looking to come here as a student, and uh, somebody looking to come here and change their visas? Like, what words do you have for them? So the advice is, if you uh, let's say those parents who want to send the kids here in the US. Let them finish high school, and then they will apply for the college they want here, whatever uh, 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 major they want to do. And then from there, they can uh, apply for visa. Mostly, we have two kinds of student visa. We have F1 and F2. No, sorry, a J visa and F1 visa. So they can choose any of those, and they, once they get accepted in the college, they send the visa person, they go to the embassy, they get their I uh, I one twenty right I twenty and then from there, if they show their financial statement, they will be ready to come and join the the one of the university they wish to join. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about you, Mister Lu? Oh, your name Lavosia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are advise the parents let their kids finish at least the first degree. In Kenya, so by then they will have, they, they do decide what their career path they want to take. Okay. So for your first degree, then you can now apply for your masters mm -hmm. in the okay. or your PhD in the US. So because you have, you have identified the career path, if it's a scientist, mm -hmm. you know the area of your research. You can target that university that has that area of research. And apply to that university and make your case with your CV. Then, once you apply, normally they, uh, if they like your research, they like your CV, they always just give you a chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah scholarship, right? And, yeah, because most people in the US don't like uh, going for PhDs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're from, from Africa and but the, but okay, I'm more enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> there is yeah. 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 I don't know how come I hear people say, some people they tell me they tried, uh, they have tried looking for even the, the colleges. It's it's kind of hard. They have to apply different colleges and they give up. Uh, US, US maybe sounds e like it was a little bit easier to get, but some people they kind of struggle to get. So the, the trick is, if you're going to do a, a PhD in a science course, you must identify a, a niche that you have to do your research in and target that university which has got that research area and then justify your ability to do that research in that area. So like if you are mm -hmm. you're doing a bachelor's in science, they, no, no, nobody they have projects in, for the year in Kenya. So you can do a project and do a research in the area that you like. Then when you apply to the US, you can now say that when I was doing my, my bachelor, mm -hmm. I did this research in this area. Therefore, I'm qualified to do research in this area in mm -hmm. your university. So that, that way they like you and they will, they will accept you. So you might so if if someone is back home and they don't know uh because some people they have no idea they just want to come as students and they don't they 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 have to look for the state you know they, they you know find figure out the state they want to come and figure out the colleges that are there and figure out like how do people go about finding like somebody who is like they don't even have family or friends to tell them about like universities or colleges out here so if you're doing a science, if you're, you're a scientist or a science-based course in Kenya, mm -hmm. you, just, uh, you just Google the internet and look at the papers published in that area of research. Okay. So once you identify that area of research, look at which university are they coming from. So that's where you apply that university. The okay. university must have a research that is 
target that is uh, close to what your interest is. So okay. you must start planning early. So you are doing your first degree. So when you do a project in your fourth year, huh. you do that area that you have to pursue research. Okay. What about the other degrees? <laughs> So that's a research. So the, the, goodness with, the goodness with the science degree is that if you're a scientist, you can work as a graduate research assistant and get paid. Um, but but other, other degrees, uh, they have, you have to be like a, a graduate teaching assistant for you to get a scholarship. So that's where the trouble comes. Yeah. So you might have to pay for your, mm. for your let's say for your first year, you have to pay for your pockets. And then, well, then second year, but have to get a our teacher assistant, which can work for you. Okay. Yeah, and it's very expensive paying money from your pocket. You know, international school fees is very high, so paying directly from your pocket is a little high. So you should be ready for that if you want to choose that route. You should be ready for that. You should be financially stable. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, and uh, when you say it's expensive, so how much do you think people should at least have in their banks before they apply to come here as students? Like, it depends which kind of course you're doing. Okay. <laughs> it depends which kind of upkeep. You no, know, when you're coming as an international student, mm -hmm. like you don't have scholarship, everything is coming from your pocket. The okay. upkeep, everything, school fees is coming from your pocket. So, uh, if you put that together, depending on which course you're doing, because courses are different and the fee is different, it's good. It's good amount of money. It could be more than the, like. But like currently, so Ed Barrett is doing a masters, and they tell me how much she's paying. I I'm paying like per month. I'm, no, see, I'm not. I'm not paying like as an, as an international student, mm -hmm. but I'm paying like an instead student, and I'm. It's a lot of like over every month you're paying 1.5. 1,500, wow. yeah. Oh, people should every, be prepared. Every month. <laughs> and, and that's just yes, school fees. And the semester takes around uh, almost two and three and a half months. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's that's for the, for the master level. But for undergraduate, we used to pay a lot of money still. Like we used to pay uh, per semester, could it be around 300, 3,000? Okay, yes, wow. Well. And because I had a scholarship and my husband was in university, they would weave up my tuition, so I pay as an instead, so it went down for my case. So it's yeah, very it's... expensive to come directly from Kenya to here as an international student. You want to, you have to have good money like in your pocket to su support you. Yeah, it's expensive. Oh, wow. It is expensive. <laughs> <We're> not, <laughs> but we are not discouraging people, you know. Oh, no. God works in different way. You may get scholarship or sponsor that can get you through the program. You, we never know. Yeah, but we yeah. just trust in God and uh, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's not discouraging. It's good to tell people so that uh, if true, somebody yeah. it doesn't have any scholarship and they are just paying everything from pocket, that that way they, they should be financially prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. People, some people, they just don't, don't have an idea. You know, they just want to know here from somebody who's gone through that, who knows. Mm -hmm. And obviously you guys have been students here, you know, the process and everything. So tell us where people can reach you. Um, on social media platforms. Yeah, okay, what's up? Okay, so on our YouTube channel, we have a uh, free and love, F R I and L A V, love. Yeah. That's uh, YouTube. Then on Facebook, we have a uh, Frida La Voice here. You can send me the link. Can send me the link later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Frida Lavosia on Facebook. Uh, you are on Instagram too, right? Yeah. 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 All right. You guys, uh, 
please check them out go to their youtube channel if you have more questions you can ask because we have a lot of people out there they want information about coming here as a student scholarships all those uh just reach them uh reach out to them watch their channel they have a lot of uh, videos and um yeah please go there subscribe subscribe we wanna support this couple they've been doing great so subscribe to their youtube channel and make sure when you get there come a kawa make sure you let them know you're coming from very easy youtube channel please don't let me down get there subscribe let's get them to a thousand subscribers and more yeah because they put so much effort and uh in you know to their channel and they never give up you know keep mm -hmm. doing what you're doing frida and love thank you <laughs> yeah and thank you so much for your time coming to my my youtube channel we appreciate you so much betty for taking this a chance to just give us share our, our life story here we don't take it for granted it just god sent moment for us and we just highly appreciate and may god bless you a lot a lot a lot expand more and more and more thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome all right take care guys and uh god bless you bye bye, bye. bye.